Hibada. Aye. Capitalization make up team with you. Are afraid of the French teacher can they pick at the end of the Can someone please tell me whether you can hear me properly? Yes, teacher. Thank you. Uh, bonjour. Uh, je pense que tout le monde va bien et bienvenue dans la session de discussion. So, I uh, wish you a good day and I think everyone is doing well. So uh, welcome to the discussion session. So I think uh, this session would be something that is useful for advanced level French language students because uh, uh, here I'm going to brief you about the setting of the paper, the answering uh, and analysis techniques and also about the marking schemes. So I could only allocate uh, 100 students here but I'll be giving you the recording. So don't worry about, yeah. So moving on to the presentations. Yeah, so uh, most of you know me, and I'm a graduate from University of California and currently working as a lecturer. Yeah, 
So first of all, I'm going to talk about the format of the paper. So basically you know about this fact because you are currently practicing the papers and all. So uh, when it comes to the format, you know that there are two papers in something common. So the first paper and the second paper, and they are allocated with two hours and three hours. Uh, and in total, it's five hours, right? So uh, this is a uh, 100 marks in total for each of the papers. And now we are going to talk about how this uh, setting is composed with, yeah. Um, when we talk about the content of the paper one, I'm just going to brief the uh, paper setting and then move on to the analysis, okay? So when it comes to the content of the paper one, we are having the first question as the grammar question, and that is allocated with 30 marks, right? That is allocated with 30 marks where you can easily grab these marks uh, because you are having only 15 MCQs there. And then the second question is a comprehension question, comprehension writing question. So this is the question where you will be uh, located with the highest number of marks, and that is 40 marks when you divide it into two. So you can uh, understand that you are getting 20 marks in whole if you just tackle the question well, right? So here you are having a part where you have to uh, underline the correct answers. And also there is a question where you have to provide with complete answers to the questions given. So there are two parts in the comprehension question. For each question, it, it, uh, it would be given with uh, allocated with 20 marks. And yeah, that's about the content of the comprehension question. And then when it comes to the language and expression question, uh, that is allocated with again 30 marks. So this is something new. That means uh, from the new syllabus onwards, you will be having this language and expression question. Uh, we are uh, like, it was uh, from 2019 onwards, right? So uh, earlier it was a uh, English to French translation in the, past papers, but here you are having a language and uh, expression question where you'll be given with multiple activities. We'll be uh, discussing it further uh, in the next slides. Uh, for now, remember that it is tested with your current knowledge, the vocabulary, uh, daily discourse and all within this question, right? And then moving on to the next one that is about the content of the paper two. So when it comes to paper two, so it's the writing paper, the written paper. So the first question is the reduction, which means the essay question. And here you will be allocated with 30 marks again. And uh, normally this essay question is uh, unlike in English, it is an argumentative essay or a narrative question. It means like, you know that there are types of uh, essays now, but here you will be given either an argumentative essay or a narrative essay. So what is this argumentative essay? That means uh, you have given a fact, so you have to provide or justify the things that is given there, or else you have to provide with your opinions. Uh, the narrative essay is like you will be supported with some kind of a situation and you have to narrate a story. You have to relate a story there. So only these two types of essays would be there, one from these uh, and like uh, no, any other like logical kind of essays would be appearing. So make sure that you tackle the question well before start writing it, okay? And then the next part, second part in the uh, paper two is the composition day, which means the uh, communication part uh, where you will be getting either a letter or an email kind of a communication module, right? So you'll be given with 10, sorry, 20 marks so when it is divided into two, like it would be 10 marks again. So it's a big deal. So here you will be given with a, uh, either with a form letter or an informal letter or else, uh, I guess it's from 2019 onwards again, you will be given an email as well because uh, the emails would be doing a better part in current society than the written letters. So it would be an email as well. So make sure that you, just analyze the format if you haven't yet like uh, analyze the format of a uh, email as well before uh, going for the exam yeah the third thing which is the translation we are uh, again it is allocated with 25 marks so here this is a, a french to english translation uh, which means like uh, you have to uh, understand the uh, sentence patterns of uh, french language when you're translating it into English, right? So we'll be discussing it further. And the last last thing, last thing that is tested on your paper is the literature part. So this is the easiest part uh, 
as per my uh, uh, arguments, like as per my uh, thinking, like it's the easiest part because this is something that you're pre-studying and you know the story. If you know the story well, it is something that can easily get your marks along with the uh, answering patterns, right? So literature part is allocated with 25 marks again. When we divide it into two, it's 12 and a half marks. And that's a big deal. And also you can get this mark easily. if You just practice the uh, literature text along with the question, in, along with the sample questions. Uh, in the new syllabus, they are, have been appeared with the with two texts. That is uh, La Classe de Neige and Pour Faire La, uh, Le Portrait de those two uh, texts have been appeared in the paper, but uh, you have 10 options. So make sure that you study well before moving on to the exam. Okay, so that is about the format of the papers. Now let's move on to the analysis of uh, the way of analysis uh, when it comes to these questions. Again, I'm moving on to paper one. So you will be having the grammar questions. 15 MCQs will be there in the grammar section, and that is uh, located with 30 marks. It's a big deal. And also, if you tackle the question well, you can easily grab these 30 marks. So I'm just going to get an example and explain you the way to analyze, analyze this, right? So I am I have taken a question here, J. Boku the Bonbon, uh, blank ver. So here, how to analyze this? What's the grammar rule? That is the first thing that you have to be careful about, which means like, uh, uh, like uh, when you read the question, you can just send uh, like to which category of the grammar rules that I have learned so far that this is belonging to. You have to sense that, right? So I just read the question. If I can't understand it properly, I'm just going to uh, move on to the answer. So la, e, lui, on. So I know these are object pronouns. So I'm just choosing the grammar rule as le, zo, uh, le pronoun, doge, which means object pronouns. And then I'm going to specify that grammar rule. I'm just not uh, reading this. I want you to like mind map the question in the way that I'm suggesting you because it would be easier like without like uh, thinking hard about the answer. It's better to mind map. First choose the grammar rule and then move on to the specific area. Now you have object pronouns here. Four object pronouns are here. Object pronouns, it's a big, uh, area where you are having personal pronouns, impersonal pronouns, and when it comes to personal pronouns, you are having five categories. In personal pronouns, you have, there are like more than 10 categories. So from that, you have to simplify, right? So I'm just going to read the question again, okay? Je boku the bonbon, tu blan ver. So here, boku the is here, and boku the, when you read the question, well, and if you have a kind of a better knowledge with grammar, ah, you remember, boku the is an indefinite pronoun. Ah, this is like, uh, when we just uh, replace this indefinite pronoun plus the noun, in, yeah, indefinite pronoun or the indefinite adjective plus the noun, then we get object pronoun, adverbial pronouns, right? So adverbial pronouns would be used just to replace an indefinite adjective plus a uh, noun. So that comes with the flow, mind mapping, right? First the rule and then specify the area. When it comes to the pronoun the object, then you're just classifying it as adverbial pronoun ong or e. So now you have to simplify it because ong and e both are given. So now you have to choose the most appropriate answer. So you have three stages. First, the grammar rule, and then specify the grammar rule, and then only you are choosing the appropriate answer. So here we are cho choosing the answer as four, because boku the bong bong, when you just simplify it, when you just replace it with the pronoun dobje, object pronoun, you are getting on some kinik. So if I just translate this, je boku the bong bong, I have a lot of seeds, tiu ver, sorry, tiu blank ver, which means tiu ong ver, do you want some? You want some. You're just asking the question using that object pronoun. So, boku the bong bong is replaced using om just to mean some. Lot of seeds, you want some, right? So, the mind mapping has to be orderly, and that has to be the grammar rule first, and then specified grammar rule then, and then only you are choosing the answer. It's better if you can analyze the questions in this way, right? So that is about the uh, grammar part. So I have given an, another example here from one of my uh, questions. So just you have given a question. 
they are underlined with the definite uh, object, sorry, direct object, right? So direct object is going to be replaced using the direct object pronoun. So here you have to first understand that this is belonging to the uh, object pronoun rules, the object pronoun the object in a rule, and then you are simplifying that rule. Uh, this is belonging to the direct object pronouns. So you are just reminding of the object pronouns that you can use this in case of replacement, then you are placing it at the relevant place, right? So that is something very much orderly. If you just, just get panicked, you will like uh, misguide yourself in answering. So make sure that you do it accordingly. Although the question is easy, just tackle the question in the uh, point onwards. Just observe the many and then move on to the specified area. And then only just to answer. And also make sure that you read the instructions properly. For an example, through well well and numero correspond to entre parenthesis. So here in this question, you have to write the corresponding answer within brackets, right? If you just uh, write the answer itself within brackets, you won't be getting marks. Remember that this is A levels. This is not all levels. This is A levels that you have to follow the instructions well, right? Make sure that you follow the instructions well before uh, start answering the questions. I have you know, instructions because you will be deducted with marks. Although all of your answers are correct, you won't be given marks if you don't follow the instructions properly, right? Okay, moving on to the second part. And uh, for me, I just tell you that this is the dif most difficult part because here in the comprehension writing part, you will be getting uh, a, a, a paragraph, a comprehension passage where you have never seen, right? Uh, so this is total language to you. So you are getting a pa passage from that particular language for the first time. So it's something very much difficult. You have to remember that, okay? But also you have to remember this is the question where you are allocated with the highest number of marks and that is 40 marks. When you divide it by two, uh, just, for, just to bring two, like it's 20 marks when you divide it by two. So it's a big deal. So remember, just to tackle this question well. So I'm just uh, try, I, I'm try, trying to give you some of my tricks that uh, I have used and I'm teaching my students uh, in this case. So in this comprehension passage, in this comprehension writing part, you will be given again with two types of questions. The first one, true la bon réponse et true la numéro correspondant entre parenthèses. That's, that question is something where you have to provide the answer. Um, from the given answer. So it's uh, much easier, I would say, because you have provided with answers now. So what you have to do is you have to choose the correct answer. So when analyzing this question, I'm suggesting you read the text at least twice and start answering the question. Here for this activity, for this comprehension activity, make sure that you spare some more time because this is having more marks for you. And also at the same time, uh, like, uh, this is a place where you need to reread the things, right? So don't start answering before reading. It's a must. It's, it's common for every language. It can be for English, it can be for Italian or any language. It's something very common, right? Don't start answering before uh, reading the passage. And I suggest you, if you have time, please read the text at least twice. Because uh, in first reading, you might you might be blank, but when uh, when you start reading it for the second time, you will be having some kind of ideas in your head about the thing that is suggested here. Because uh, three consecutive years now, you are learning about this, right? Three, two and a half years, you are learning things. Learning thing. So uh, you can tackle the things. If you just can uh, uh, read it at least for two eyes, and start answering, okay? So that is the first thing. And then read the questions well and find the most appropriate answer in this first case. Then write the answers number in the given bracket. Remember that you are not writing answers, you are just writing the number of the answer, okay? So that is about the first part and that is not a big deal to answer uh, like, uh, answers correctly because uh, you have given the answers. But when it comes to the second part, Reponder question par the pars complete, Look at this question, par de phrase complete, which means with completed phrases, with completed sentences, you have to answer. 
Kali Kali we are you can't write just uh, the answer only. You have to provide a complete answer, right? So here, read the question well and write the most appropriate answer. The answer should be a completed sentence, which means there should be subject, there should be verb and the object, right? So the, normally the object is uh, containing with the answer, no? either the subject or the object is containing with the answer. So make sure you provide a complete answer. You provide only the answer, that means without a complete sentence, uh, again, the examiner would be furious and you won't be sometimes getting marks. I don't know, it's, it's depending on the type of the examiner you are getting. By the way, uh, since you can provide a complete answer, make sure that you do it, right? Yeah, there are questions. Uh, no, uh, like uh, only 100 participants can be allocated here. So I'm just providing the recording. One of my friends want to join. Okay, so sorry for that, but I'll be providing the recording, okay? Yeah, I thought it was a question. So moving on to the third part, and that is language and expression. So as I told you this earlier, this is something really new because uh, actually this is something that very much needed in your papers. Unlike English to French translation that we were having when we were schooling, like this is something very, uh, very much active type of a question, right? Uh, I can't find a word to say that, yeah. So when it comes to the language and expression part, which is totally a new one, you can use this method when you are analyzing. So this part is not only containing with one type of question, this is containing some different kind of questions. We'll be discussing uh, the kind of questions that you will be getting. Uh, okay, stay tuned. So the analysis module, so read the instructions properly and get what you have been requested to do. For an example, imagine that you have four questions under this language and expression part, right? May language and expression part together. You are having four questions. So if you're having four questions, they will be provided with uh, different kind of instructions. So like uh, reread them if you don't understand. It is not a big deal just to understand the instructions as per your knowledge, but uh, Remember that you do it well, because here, what you are tested with is uh, your daily uh, discourse and all. I'm just reading it here. Language and expression is generally testing on your spoken, written language usage. Although you're not using um, uh, French language in your spoken context, remember that this part is just uh, testing whether you can like manage your talking and all, whether you can just uh, adapt your written language and all, right? So uh, that is why this expression part is coming, okay? Yeah, follow the instructions and find the answers in each question. If you are requested to add the, change, the changes in the modified phrases or sentence, please pay attention to them or else you will mark, uh, lose marks. So here, what I wanted to say is, imagine that you have given a question just to make, uh, just to add plurals, like you are given the sentence in singular sense, using singular nouns and all, and you are requested to uh, change those singular nouns into plurals. So if you only change the singular nouns into plurals, can you just, uh, can, the, can the sentence be a correct one? No, right? You have to change the verb, which means the verb conjugations has to be changed. You, you have to change the adjectives, adverbs. So these things have to be changed. The language components have to be changed. So when you are just requested to do some changes within the questions, remember that you adapt the sentence in the, the new format of the sentence has, has to be also changed, right? You have to pay attention to grammar, the sentence patterns and everything, right? If, you, if not, you will be losing marks. You'll be deduct, deducted marks uh, for grammar mistakes and everything, right? So that is something that you will forget easily and remember to do that because it's a must. So that's about language and expression. I'm going to suggest you uh, some, some kind of activities that you can uh, do within this given time, right? Again, uh, for an example, if it is, if I suggest you synonyms, just try to find some synonyms, kind of synonyms that are uniquely uh, used or like commonly used in your uh, everyday vocabulary. So then it would be easier if such kind of an activity appears in the language and expression part, it would be easier for you to tackle the question, right? Okay, that is about the first part, first paper. So we have grammar part, 
and that is with 30 marks. And then we are having the comprehension writing part, and that is the highest number of marks, which is 40. And then uh, in, the, uh, in the first paper, we are having language and expression part, where you are having multiple types of questions, multiple questions, uh, which are testing your uh, spoken and written language usage within the daily discourse. So that is with 30 marks. So 30, 30, 60 plus 40, which is 100 marks for the first paper. And now we are moving on to the paper two, which is the written paper, writing paper uh, in your exam. So it is, uh, at first hand, it is uh, composed with the like, the first question that is appearing there is the essay question, uh, reduction, and that is allocated with 30 marks. Here, I'll just going through the uh, marking scheme where like I'm discussing you discussing with you the way that you will be given marks and uh, the way that the examiners are deducting marks uh, but before that I'm just going to tell you the way analyze the reduction the it's a type of question right uh, as I told you earlier here you will be normally getting a narrative kind of an essay or an argumentative essay and the steps in writing an essay is, first of all, you have to read and understand the prompt, which means you have to read the question well, and you have to understand what is being asked there. What is being asked there? And also, it, it would be good, uh, like this paper is not going to be given to the, uh, given for them, no? So you are just taking it back home, right? So please use your pens, highlighters, and whatever, and highlight the important parts in the paper itself, right? So read and understand the prompt, and make sure that you under underline or highlight the key uh, keynotes that are included in the topic. And then the second thing is planning your content. When it comes to the planning, if we just go with this thing, the brainstorming and organizing thing, I would be like, I would be. Uh, at least 80% sure that you are providing your content to the maximum because uh, like the students that I have taught, they are telling that brainstorming is doing something very good. Uh, okay, I'll just tell you what this brainstorming is if you don't know about the fact because uh, like you are provided with extra paper in the, paper, uh, in, the in the exam, right? You can just get a paper and you can uh, like draw a circle in the middle and you can put the keywords or the key content that you're going to focus in the topic of the essay. Imagine if it is about the environmental pollution, right? So you can just put that word into the essay, the, into that circle. And then uh, around the area, like, you can just a mind map, you can brainstorm and you can collect your ideas that, are, that you can recall from your past experiences, from your competence, knowledge, past experience, you can, write them down around the circle. So you are having the topic in the middle, you can just write them down around. And then you are going to analyze, you are going to organize the content that you are going to write here. For an example, if it is environmental pollution, the points that you're going to discuss, right? The points that you're going to discuss are around the paper now. So you won't be forgetting them. Otherwise, like this is a uh, timely exam, so it is, very much frequently that you are forgetting the content, right? It is it is something very common because uh, you are just uh, doing this within a time frame. So make sure uh, that you just write them down within the extra paper that you have given. And uh, give me a second. Okay. So make sure that you collect those ideas and you you have written them now. So you won't be forgetting them again because they are written. Written content can't be erased, no? So they are written. So now please organize your content uh, as per the uh, passages that you're going to make, make sure that like normally this kind of an essay is containing with five paragraphs, no? So just organize your content into those paragraphs. And you don't have to write the content there. You're just going to put numbers. One is this, two is this, because you're putting the numbers and you're organizing the content. Now you have a particular kind of a flow within your mind, right? Brainstorming is you're collecting your ideas and you're organizing the content. And I'm going to suggest you to use and cite sources also. Like then you are brainstormed, you have brainstormed and now you have organized your content. 
then uh, within the content you can just uh, like recall about the things that other persons have said or oh, like the uh, things that you have quoted from important places this person has said this thing you can quote these things like last week i uh, had an essay and that person was uh, talking about the communication right so he has like highlighted about uh, highlights uh, highlight some sites citations or phrases from uh, some uh, major people right so it was very nicely tackled that she has uh, like manipulated her essay uh, like along with the uh, phrases that those people have uttered, uttered, right? So you can use that technique as well, but it is not something very, uh, very much essential in this context. So what you have to do here is you can brainstorm, organize, and then you can also uh, cite things. And also then you can start writing the draft. Writing the draft means like a, you can note down the flow here because you are not having so much of time. Uh, you can't do this uh, writing the drafting uh, at the exam. So what you have to do here is you are brainstorming, you are organizing, and you just can uh, tackle the flow. And then uh, you can start writing. And when you start writing, you can do this thing. This is something very much uh, unique uh, where your essay, essay becomes a unique thing. And that is about the thesis sentence. I guess some of you might have heard about the thesis statement, but some of you haven't. Thesis statement is the statement where you are just uh, uh, including everything that is going to be discussed within the essay in one single line, one single sentence. So normally this thesis sentence, thesis statement is coming in the first paragraph, the, the last line of the first paragraph would be this thesis statement. You are just introducing the content and then you are writing uh, a reflection onto your essay. And this reflection is included in this thesis. And if you just, that makes thesis, if you just compose a sentence, which is very much rich with the facts that you are going to discuss within your essay, it would be very good because uh, normally uh, your examiners are looking for that. Right? If you can provide a good and strong thesis sentence, it would be very much uh, profitable for you, right? Okay, so that is about the thesis statement. So I have told you like you can write a five paragraphs essay here because uh, that is what you are expected to do as A-level students, uh, five paragraphs, paragraphs essay. And it very not a no problem, but just manage your content, okay? So then the sixth thing I have added here is responding to the prompt, which means you are answering to the question itself. You are not just, no, you are not doing that. You are just responding to the prompt. If it is environmental pollution, you can just talk about the universal things. You can talk about the local things and everything, but which are related to environmental pollution only, right? Responding to the prompt is a must. You can't deal with background things like, background things be, uh, can be dealt, but you can't just go for those uh, uh, out of the topic things, sort of things, right? And then make sure that you spare more time just to proofread your content because we all are students and we make mistakes. So make sure that you have enough adequate time just to proofread what you have written because sometimes uh, what you have written can't be understood by yourself at, at least, right? So make sure that you have enough time, at least five to 10 minutes uh, would be enough for this. So spare that time just to proofread and correct the errors that you have made. And if it is like, if it is for the, if you're having more time for your exam, not for the exam, um, not for the students who are doing LOS this year, if you're having more time, make sure at home that you're doing the whole process. Like you are just, you can just write a draft and also when you start writing the content, you can also proofread it and you can re-edit your content and pr uh, provide a final output, which is very much brilliant, right? A content which is very much uh, rich. So make sure you follow this order. Then moving on to the second one, composition, which means uh, uh, the letter type of thing, letter or email, the communication module. So here, when analyzing here, you have to write 150 words and in the essay, you have to write 250 words, right? So when it comes to this letter thing, 
uh, it is allocated with 20 marks. And when it comes to the analysis, I would like to tell you this. Read the title and understand which type of a letter is it. It can be a formal letter. It can be an informal letter. It can be an email. So understand which type of a letter is it. Because, uh, and also I'm suggesting you like uh, this thing, stick to the phrases and no, I'm just suggesting you that you can, like you will be given with some kind of different wording, different wording for these letters, kind of letters. So make sure that you understand those words, the synonyms and choose the correct type of uh, letter or the email that you have requested to write. Okay, it's a must because uh, you, you will be misguided with those words because the chairperson panel, they know that you are going to write as a, an email here, but you will be misguided with the synonyms and all, right? Make sure that you just uh, at least Google them or uh, find them from your teachers or whatever, whoever, um, and uh, like uh, go along with those words, okay? And the second thing is stick to the phrases and expressions that can be used in different letters at different occasions. So this is a must. Like uh, we can't use our general or day-to-day -day language when we are writing letters, right? So make sure that you like, un uh, like um, learn and practice set expressions. The expressions that you can use according to different contexts. For an example, if it is a complaining letter, you have different uh, sort of a jargon, so, sort of sort of phrases and expressions. So make sure that you use them. And then when it comes to the, uh, let's take, uh, if it is a appreciation letter, if it is a complaining letter, appreciation letter, thanking letter, so kind of letters would be there. It can be, may, it can be also uh, emails. So for this particular context, you have different kind of language and make sure that you just follow those expressions. It's a must, right? And then the third thing is use those phrases and expressions at the relevant places and create an organized letter or email. So you can't like imagine that you have like uh, read them and you can memorize those phrases, but you can't use them at every place. For an example, if you're just writing the content, you, can, you can't write everything that you can memorize within your head in the content. It has to be appropriate, right? Your letter has to be organized and that has to be uh, with appropriate terms and language. So make sure that you use phrases and expressions which are uh, specifically needed for relevant places. And then proofread. Again, I'm just suggesting you to proofread and make necessary changes because as students, we make changes. So make sure that you proofread and do the necessary changes. Always pay attention to the relevant format of the piece of writing. You will be given a, a small mark for this format as well. So make sure that you follow <coughs> that Okay, then uh, the translation thing. So this is uh, a French to English translation. So when it comes to translations, I have some suggestions for you because uh, tackling the translation is something we, we, we seem to be like, it's, it seemed to be like uh, something very easy, but actually it's uh, not, not that much easy because we are just uh, going through those like uh, set modules, set phrases and all, right? So we are just uh, tackling those sentence pattern. So when it comes to the translation, it's something a bit, tricky, right? So make sure that you understand. For an example, I'll just take this example if it is French to English translation. Uh, simple, simple example. Uh, J'ai 25 ans, which means I am 25 years old, right? J'ai 25 ans. I am 25 years. Je m'appelle Devindi. My name is Devindi. I call myself Kian Nehane, right? So likewise, you have set ways. So you have to find, find these, like you have to tackle them. And you have to do the proper translation. For an example, Jay Van Sango you are, you are not saying I have 25 years. You are saying I, I am 25 years old, right? So uh, the translation has to be a correct one, a, a grammatically correct one, and also a coherent one. Coherent means meaningful, right? So make sure that you don't follow the direct translation method. I, I have 25 years, I am 25 years old. Like it is not a direct translation. You have to remember that. 
So that is where you are losing marks in translations, okay? So make sure you tackle that correctly, appropriately. And French to English translation is much easier, but you have to be very careful in avoiding the direct translations. That is what I told you here. So you have to avoid, like you can do direct translation at occasions, but it is not something that you can do uh, more often, right? So make sure that you do the uh, translations in a more careful way where you are avoiding the direct translations, but following those uh, sentence patterns uh, appropriately in the recipient language or in the uh, language that you are going to translate it into. Keep in mind that the translation is about re-expressing meaning using the forms and structures of the target language, right? This is not something that you are going to say, like this is in French, and you are not going to say that thought, that complete idea in English. You are just rephrasing, re-expressing the meaning, right? So make sure that you keep that in your mind when you start doing the translation. You are not like, you don't have to have the uh, serious sense of that thing, but you can re-express that accordingly, right? You have to write the most important things, the key things have to be included, but make sure that you can re-express it appropriately. Appreciate the pattern of words in the source text. That means uh, it's not the direct translation, you are just appreciating the key things that are included in the source text, which means if it is a French to English one, the French text has to be uh, followed in an appreciating way. Uh, you can't lose things, you can't just uh, forget about the things, you have to include everything, but you can also re-express those things. Observe any change that may have taken place in patterning the words in the receptor language, which means uh, if you have to like change certain things, if you just imagine that like when it comes to Singha, we are having mama bath kava, which means subject, object, verb. But when it comes to English, it is SVO, I eat rice, subject, verb, object. So likewise, if you have to deal with these changes, kind of particular changes in the receptor language. Receptor language means the language that you're going to translate this text into. So if you're having some kind of a changes in this receptor language, make sure that you do them, right? It's a must. And observe the use of mama uh, example like a French bullying. You know that adjectives, right? When it comes to adjectives, normally the, uh, except for a uh, limited number of adjectives, most of the adjectives are going after the noun, right? Now, so, if you just don't follow that order in the receptor language, your sentence would be something wrong, right? If it is a, uh, I have a blue dress in English, that is, uh, sorry, in French we have to say, J yun rob blur, right? J yun rob blur. So when it comes to that sentence, if you are just writing that sentence as I have dress blue, it is wrong, right? So you have, this is something uh, simple, simple, okay? So you have to follow that order in the, uh, receptor language. It's not uh, something that you can uh, do with direct translations. That is what I wanted to mean here, right? Okay, then appreciate the pattern of words in the source text. Uh, 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 sorry, observe the use of words in different contexts with different meanings. Again, you have to observe the wording here. If there is any necessary changes that should be done, you have to change them according to the meaning. Translate the sentences phrases and set expressions smoothly and accordingly. So finally, you have to tackle all these things and translate the sentences very smoothly, right? In the marking scheme, you will be given marks for each sentence. Uh, in, the, in the translation passage, you might be provided with 25 sentences and you will be given one mark for each sentence. I'll be discussing it in the marking scheme. So that's what it is happening there. So make sure that you write grammatically uh, correct sentences which are also correct in the meaning and the sentence pattern, sentence order. So that is about the translations. Then we will be moving on to the final thing, literature text, French literature part. Uh, so you know that you are already, you have already learned about, and I don't, I don't know about the uh, 22 or other students. I just know about the 20, 21 students that you have already learned these 12 texts and you will be given a question based on one literature text that is uh, appearing on your French literature anthology, right? So you will be given um, 
12 sorry you will be given a text out of 12 texts that are included in your french literature anthology you know that there are 12 texts so one will be given uh, for you to refer here read it well and revise your memory on what you have studied under the particular text or poem given so imagine if it is a rex uh, if it is rex so you have to revise what you have learned about rex and the characters appear in there the technique the themes the major things that have been focused by the author there, right? So then you will be, uh, you will only be start answering the questions. So read the questions well and answer them with reference to the literature text. So now uh, this is much easier to get this 25 marks because you have pre-studied it and already you have given the text itself, right? If the text is given, so you don't have to worry, right? Then you have to read the questions well and with reference to the text that has been given, you have to start answering. Try to write complete answers as much as, as, much as possible, sorry. So here you can't provide sentence with the answer only. You have to write complete sentences as your answer because you are a level students, you are expected to write complete answers. So make sure that you provide your answer with a completed sentence, right? Uh, okay, so that is about the analysis so then uh, no before that we will be talking about the key areas what are the key areas that you have to study in order to answer literature questions what are those things the general meaning and the area of discussion the themes and their relation to the story and the techniques and their purpose and finally the area of question formation so if you want to write proper answers for the literature questions you have to be thoroughly competent enough in these areas, you have to have a good understanding about the general meaning, the themes and techniques, and also about the questions formation uh, from this particular text that you have given, okay? Then I'm going on to uh, the marking schemes, right? So I have chosen 2020 LL paper, last year's paper. So the first one, the reduction, the essay question, uh, so you have to write a, write a, uh, write an essay uh, of about uh, 250 words by choosing one of these questions, right? Look at this marking scheme. It is allocating 30 marks in whole. And for the introduction, body and conclusion, you are allocated with three marks. Grammar, 12 marks. Look at this thing. You have to remember this thing. Every four grammar mistakes. The every four grammar mistakes that you make in your essay will make you deduct with one mark. Where the grammar mistakes you will be deducted with one mark. And for every six spelling mistakes, you will be deducted with one mark. For every six uh, spelling mistakes, you will be deducted with one mark. If the sentence does not make sense, like if you don't provide uh, your essay with a coherent sentence, one mark is deducted. Half length essays, for an example, if you, you, you are given with 250 uh, words essay. So if you just write 125 or less words, you will be, your essay would be marked with 15 marks, okay? Don't do that. Uh, although your content is rich, although you have not made any mistake, your essay would be marked out of 15. That means out of half of the marks given, if you just don't write, a, write uh, enough number of words. Uh, if the essay exceeds to, uh, 250 words, then two marks would be deducted. Actually, it's uh, something more than the two marks. That means like, uh, yeah, you will be deducted with two marks. And at the same time, your examiner won't be marking uh, a lengthy essay. Remember that, okay? Because they are not having too much of time. So make sure that you get allocated uh, to this amount of marks uh, where you are not exceeding the limit, right? Otherwise, the examiner won't uh, check that last part of the essay because they want to save their time, right? So make sure that you follow the instructions well and write a proper uh, proper essay, which is uh, with the adequate amount of words. And no marks are given if the essay is out of topic. That is why I just uh, requested you to answer the essay in the uh, exact way. That means like I, I requested you to uh, read the prompt and answer uh, accordingly, right? So please follow that, that you have to uh, write the essay in an appropriate way. Uh, and also it has to be 
uh, content based right uh, so the, for the content you will be given 15 marks if your content is out of the uh, out of the topic or out of the topic uh, you won't be given marks and if your content uh, is not that much rich your marks will be deducted that means like if you are not talking about the fact in a um, in an appropriate sense you won't be uh, given a good mark and also when it comes to the grammar you are located with 12 marks now so if you just make mistakes and mistakes repeatedly then you will uh, these 12 marks would be deducted right so make sure that you write grammatically correct and uh, grammatically sentence grammatically uh, correct sentences which are having the correct sentence order right uh, when it comes to the placement of the pronouns adjectives and all please make sure that you do them properly so they come uh, into these uh, grammatical theories and also to the sentence pattern so if you just don't do it properly you won't be given a good mark in the grammar section right uh, yeah that's about the marking scheme uh, yes then i'm moving on to the uh, letter thing so again this is from 2020 level um so look at this marking scheme So uh, it has been given say letter the plan, which means to the examiner, they are saying that this is a complaining letter. So uh, it, like if the marking scheme says that it's a complaining letter, you can't write a thanking letter, right? So you have to be specific about the content. That is why I just told you to uh, like read the question well and understand which kind of a letter is it, right? So that is a must. And according to that, you will be given marks for the format and the content and the grammar. Right. Remember that although the grammar can be skipped, like the content and the format is totally depending on what they are saying in the marking scheme. So if you just understand this in a different way, in a uh, totally different way, like you will be deducted with these marks. So remember that. So format is given with six marks. And for that, you have to uh, read these things. OK, that is why the marking schemes are released for you to check. Right, so this is about the 2020 paper and look at the format and the number of marks that is allocated. It's a big number. And when it comes to the content, it is given with, it is allocated with eight marks. Right, so this is about the content deviation. And when it comes to the grammar, six marks. And this is same as the essay, which means you will be deducted with uh, uh, one mark for each, for, for every uh, four grammar mistakes. Grammar mistakes, uh, spelling mistakes for e for every six spelling mistakes will be deducted with mark, one mark so that same theory that is practiced in the essay would be a, practiced in the letter as well so you will be given six marks for the essay uh, for the letter the letter and uh, make sure that you wrap them all with proper sentence patterns and also with the uh, clear and proper uh, appropriate grammar patterns okay so that is about the letter or email then i'm moving on to the translation so again i have chosen the 2020 a level uh, translation so here you can see that uh, from 1 to 25 there are 25 sentences within this translation passage okay so within the passage you have 25 marks and remember that you will be given 25 marks for the translation question so now you can imagine that each sentence is given with one mark and if you don't uh, provide the correct or the most appropriate kind of the translation for each sentence you won't be getting that one mark imagine that you have written uh, 13 sentences uh, correctly so you will be given only 13 sentences if you made mistakes in the translation uh, within one sentence you won't be getting that one mark that is allocated for each sentence right so make sure that you keep that in your mind when you start when you start translations yes it's a nation it, it's having only one particular idea within the context but it is marked for each and every sentence according to the way that you are going to translate right so keep that in your mind when you start doing the translations also uh, if you're having time for the exams i would suggest you to do at least one translation per day i'm not just asking you to do a lengthier one i'm just asking you to do at least five to ten sentences per day because 
if you just do it today and if you just do it in the next week uh, without the dictionary or something yeah you can recall the words if you're having time for the exam make sure that you do do practice these translations uh, like uh, you can start doing it doing one translation today and then you can do the same thing after one week or two weeks of time right so you can use a dictionary today but you can uh, like limit the usage of the dictionary by the next week or the uh, the week after the next right uh, and also you can practice the same translation after a month and you 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 don't have to use the dictionary there because you have translated the same passage for two times now right so you can do this thing if you're having time uh, at least do one translation per day one to two translations per day and it will make your vocabulary rich one and also you will understand some uh, meaningful and convenient grammatical and uh, like a kind of sentence patterns within the language okay so that's my suggestion and then finally to the literature text so again i'm taking 2020 a level one so sithe khetramu ki for reference ala pantheon so this is from the uh the literature tech poor pal la potre dan was so it's a poem you know so from that poem by jack crawford you will be you have been asked questions if if there are students from the second shy uh you can uh memorize the things right so it was from poor pal la potre dan was by uh, jack crawford and now you have given uh, one two three four five six seven eight questions uh here and you have to you have allocated with 25 marks here right so you have to read the question first of all you have to read the text that you have given and you can memorize the things that you have learned about these texts and also then you can start uh, reading the questions before answering so if the question is asking sitte yeah sitte khatramo ki pon reference ala pantheon which means a uh, site forward site ki bodama you have to remember this is something that i have to take out from the poem right so side forwards which makes reference to the painting so you know that there is a painting appearing like it's the major thing that is appearing in this particular poem so now you have to side forwards that makes a reference to the painting but in the marking scheme you only have given pandra la tabla la tual la pinzo la potre you have given so many words which make reference to the painting but it is not a complete sentence so what you have to remember here is you have to provide a completed sentence as your answer so if the question is asking sithe khatramo so you can just put uh, quotations parentheses these are uh, inverted commas dala you can just include four of these words okay metana inverted commas dala me wachana hatarak danna puluwa and you can say form reference ala pantheon metta song mo song khatramo ki form reference ala pantheon a what much na hatara danwa are four words which make reference to the painting so you can find a complete sentence out of the question itself it's not a big deal right so the question is sitte khatramo ki for reference ala pantheon side for words which make reference to the painting uh, i'm just put in the inverted you know that inverted are like this in french pandre la tableau la toile la penzo son khatramo are four words ki for reference ala pantheon are for words which make reference to the painting so you have written a completed sentence nobody can just judge you from that so you can you you have shown your colors there by making a complete sentence it's a must to provide a complete sentence as a level students remember that okay so now i am coming on to the last part and that is about the language and expression we were talking about this in the first part of the paper like this is included in the first paper uh Two hours paper. Okay, so my main language and expression part of it, and I have told you that this is something new. So I have some suggestions which might be there in your paper uh, under this language and expression part. Language and expressions part. Okay, so that's how my name is. What I saw gave that my test twenty synonyms, antonyms, more more uh, on sorry, etrange, which means odd words, definite the phrase, which means set phrases, verbs, times. Uh, comparative a superlative comparatives and superlatives dialogues adjectives adverb plurals nouns and pronouns um, employ emphasis jobs and professions and all like uh, jargon uh, in different 
sectors of employment like uh, for an example if it is about the medical field you have a particular job and if it is about the uh, education field or any other field like you will be having different sort of jargon so ek ek vidhi khata vyavahara ke liye ro singhane so you will be having some um, language and expression based things like that and you have to pay attention to such things before the exam prior to the exam if you want to get ready for this language and expression part so make sure that you practice some questions based on these areas uh, if you want to tackle this language and expression part uh in a convenient way in a very strong way yeah uh, and also if you if you have in time for the exam make sure that you follow barons tondons and this is a uh i can't remember the word the uh, dondo right so i i am suggesting the, uh, this uh language booklets to be practiced prior to your exam if you are having time by now uh if you want to tackle language and expression part um in a convenient way yeah so that's about my explanation about the paper setting the marking scheme the analysis and everything so if you are having any questions you can ask anything now Yes, uh, I have some questions that you have asked. When answering, do we need to use our own language, or can we copy the same sentence in the comprehension? Like uh, for this question, um, if you are copying the same thing from the text like it is uh, according to the context okay so chamod is asking good, good good question so he is asking whether we can copy the same sentence from the comprehension passage or can we write our own it depends on the question that you have been asked for an example if you just uh, if you have just asked something that is particularly existing in the comprehension comprehension passage you can't write something other than so you have to write the same thing but if necessary you have to use quotations as well within within the quotation marks that you have to cite certain things it depends on the context nobody is going to like uh, uh mark that in that sense but however uh, if the question is asking you to write something then you have to write uh, that particular thing using your own language but if it is something uh, that is regarding the existing a uh, content within the passage then you have to quote that same idea but you have to write the complete sentence using the using your own language right samini so is asking uh, i don't know no there are 100 but you can't see i guess now it's only 97 uh, i have a little question regarding essay writing so what i want to know is that uh suppose we are having an essay to be written about pollution so if we don't know some specific french words but know the english word for example factories cause pollution if we if we don't know the word uh, for factories in french what best to do either to keep it a blank or to write the english word with a pencil uh for your question i last like uh, as a teacher i can't answer this question but for your question i'm suggesting you not to leave any blanks on your paper right uh like i know that uh, we even for me i'm not 100% uh, best at the vocabulary because this is not my mother tongue so yeah it's not my first language or whatever so i don't know some vocabulary right so just don't leave any blanks at least yeah use a uh, at least uh, right use the english word at least so that is what i could suggest here but uh, as a teacher uh, i'm wrong if i just suggest you to write the english word so yeah let me asking ma'am uh, my friend is waiting ah oh, no <laughs> please give a example for the second one bag yeah uh, which one is it like i am checking the questions right now how many pages should we have to write i mean roughly you mean for the essay right so for me i am having big letters big letters means like 
I be using uh, one and uh, three quarter of full step, one and half of full steps, and uh, one and three quarter of the exam papers. But if, if you're having small letters, you can write one and quarter, one side and quarter of the other page. If you're having small letters, that is roughly. And also, the examiners will be counting your uh, letters in this sense. For an example, imagine this is a full step letter. Okay. This is the exam paper. Imagine. So you have, imagine that you are having 25 lines in this way. Okay. 25 rows. Right. Right, so imagine that you have written five words in the first line, right? They are counting that one, two, three, four, five. And imagine that you have written 25 here, five into 25. And that is how they are counting. You might be having four words in one line, six words in one line, but they are counting the first line. So if it is having five lines, some, somehow without it can be a random line, right? So imagine that line is having five, uh, five, five uh, words, and if you have written uh, 25, so five into 25, that is how they are counting. It's a rough count, okay? Uh, so it says 20, 250 uh, 50 words, which means you don't have to specifically write 250 words. So you can write between 240 to uh, 270, likewise, right? So it's the rough count. Uh, do we have to do the translation sentence by sentence? Yes, you will be doing the translation sentence by sentence, but the meaning is a, a compound one, which means like every sentence is interconnected, but you will be given marks for each line, right? So that is up to like the uh, line separation is up to the examiners. You have to provide a completed a compound idea where you are marked for one sentence. I just told you to like, keep that in your mind when you're answering. Like if you just make a mistake at one sentence, you will be losing marks for that particular sentence. Um, translation, the marking scheme, came the words, and the similar words, yes. Yes, Ruth, you can go ahead. But when it comes to literature questions and all, like uh, if it is something that you have to quote from the text, then you have to write them. You can't write synonyms, okay? For an example, the pins of, uh, paintbrush so if you just try to see the for that you won't be given marks because the thing is appearing uh, on the uh, poem itself so you have to quote it right so for such cases you won't be given marks except for the letter email and diary page what are the possible things can come uh, there was uh, this thing uh, uh, Petitions, uh, except for emails, diary, and letters, petitions are also in the uh, discussion at the moment. But I just uh, don't assume that it will come because uh, it's not that much focused on your syllabus. But uh, that is also a suggestion, petitions. OK. Can you suggest a good source to find texts for translations? Um, I'm just taking it randomly from newspapers and all. For an example, if you just take uh, e-newspapers, uh, French ones, right? From the internet, you can find out some texts because they are having current language now, so it's easier for, me, for you. So I'm suggesting you to go for news uh, websites and all which are written in French. Can we focus for an A, although we have less knowledge on that language expression? <laughs> okay, uh, language expression is having 30 marks. So that is the suggestion I could make here. Uh, yes, you can target for an A, but you have to be, uh, you have to have a thorough knowledge about the other areas. Right, because lang language and expression is uh, something that you are summarizing everything that you are writing on the two papers, right? So it, it is just something casual from all the knowledge that you are tested on the other things. So that is the place where you can easily grab marks. Yes, of course, I am not saying that you can fo you can focus for an A. Yes, Sanjini, I'll be giving. 
for essay like how many CR pages? See, you won't be given CR pages at the exam and you will be given examination papers. I guess that they are having 25 or 30 lines, right? So imagine that you are writing five words in a line. So five into five, uh, five into 25, it is 200, sorry, 125. So if it is uh, five lines, so then you have to write two sides, one page, two sides. Right, so that is how you can count it. Don't waste time to count the uh, count the number of words. Okay, just count the number of words in the first line and count the number of uh, uh, lines that you are going to write. Okay, that's what you have to do. Don't count the words in your essay. Don't do it because uh, you will be wasting time. You can spare that time just to proofread what you have written, and you can uh, like uh, uh, do the changes in the, uh, the errors that you have made. I say, say, can we use the essay topic as our starting statement? Yes, we can use it, but uh, if you can adapt it, it's better. In the essay, I'm just going to, yeah. Uh, in the essay, are we to start the essay from the beginning of the line or can we start from the middle? Yes, it's up to you. Like it's about the organization. When you brainstorm and like analyze your facts, you can just think of the uh, place that you can start. Like uh, it's something that yeah. Like if it is okay, I'll just tell you like this. So if it is about the environmental pollution, so you are writing an essay to your examiner, thinking that your examiner never have heard about the environmental pollution. Kava dava then parisarudushane ke na send um topic you are just uh, explaining it right so in that sense you can start from any place but your uh, content has to be an organized one that is what uh, the examiners are expecting there no rules because the uh, writing part is something that you can expose yourself single and translate connect of course because we have a different style of writing. And if you just translate, like I guess that Sinhala, from the three languages I know, French, English, and Sinhala, Sinhala is the most difficult language. You have to have these uh, grammar patterns and everything very, uh, very much appropriately, right? So therefore it's uh, something uh, very difficult to do it in the in, in Sinhala language. It's better to do it in English. But I, I, I don't like uh, force you, it's up to you. Uh, it's better to do it in English. If we have, yes, there is so many rules. I, I have learned Sinhala only up to all levels. So you know that how much of things that we had to learn. So there. Like if you are doing a single for A levels, then uh, you know these uh, rules and regulations. So it's okay. But uh, when it comes to the other things, like uh, it, it would be uh, problematic for yourself because you have to follow these grammatical patterns very, uh, very much clearly. If we have the right number, if words, uh, the number of pages doesn't matter. Right? Yes, number of pages doesn't matter in the essay. Is there a possibility of essay topics related to the pandemic to be included? Yes, of course. Since you are undergoing uh, this uh, un undergoing this uh, COVID-19 pandemic for two, uh, two, two consecutive years by now, because it started in 2020 you now, so you are just undergoing this uh, for two, two consecutive years. So there might be uh, something related to pandemic as well. I'm not sure, there might be things. So make sure that you are having a rich vocabulary uh, which is based on these uh, pandemic situations and all, COVID-19 and all. And also health and sanity type of topic. It's not only about pandemic. It can be about health, uh, sanity, all of these things, right? New topics. Politics. Can you suggest a good website blog to find text for translations? And do you have a revision class? Okay, so blogs can a keyword thing. I'm just suggesting you to go for news channels because they are having updated knowledge and all. And also like the language there is very much rich. So just suggesting you to go for French news sites. Okay. Can we ignore the two lit passages asked in Mama Maridana? 
can we ignore the lit passages lack of explanation poor pala poster dan was so deka amataka karala danna puluwan da kiyala hanawa uh okay 50 percent yes but yes it won't appear because uh, you have 12 to out of 12 you have 10 remaining and also like uh, i'm just uh, thinking that a poem won't also be appearing this time kilahitana because last time it was a poem nisa but uh go for those 10 all the 10 things right amashi we have learned all the 12 uh, how could we set the points for an essay like 2020 first essay? Uh, Amisha, like, uh, uh, I, I have to go back to that. It is possible the fair you ray amethyst you ran internet. Okay, so here in the marking scheme as well, you can find the student must agree or not. So here it's kind of an argumentative essay. So what you have to do is just to go for an uh, justification. So when it comes to the justification here, uh, is it possible to have, a, uh, possible to make a good or true friendship over the internet, for an example, over the social media and so on? Can we have a true relationship? That is what it is asking here. So for this question, uh, you have to first agree. You have to first say yes or no. That is your opinion. And based on your opinion, you have to argue. For an example, imagine that you are saying no. Okay. You are saying no. Now you have to provide your reasons. So why do you say no? You you might be saying like uh, social media is, is untrustable. Right. So these things have been happened. So you are just providing uh, reasons uh, for your argument. That is what it is happening here. And you can find all of these things in the brainstorming session and you can order them appropriately in the way that you're going to write it. Okay, so that is what it is. Expect like uh, it's totally up to you because if it is an argument to say it is a, uh, it is talking about your opinion on the things. So it's better if you can just uh, target on the problem, uh, what you are, what you argument, what you're going to argument on and then um arrange the things okay then so many questions so questions are better because we can discuss so many uh things that we have missed how can we avoid confusion when seeing the difficult grammar in MCQs? For this question, actually uh, what you have to have first is the confidence. No? So when it comes to that, like you you have to have a particular, like when, when you're going for the exam, I know that you, uh, you won't be having time. Sometimes you won't be having time or you haven't learned about certain points. So make sure that you leave them and do the uh, easier ones first and then uh, like go for the difficult ones. And just uh, try to remember uh, in the way that I have told you, like I, the, the, you had first uh, think of the uh, grammar rule and then only you can specify that grammar rule. Then only you can uh, find the correct answer. So go for, go for that order uh, just after doing the easier ones. And remember to mark the uh, difficult ones using a pencil because uh, otherwise you will be forgetting them. Can we translate French to single? Yes, of course you can do, but make sure that you have to uh, provide grammatically correct sentences. If you're doing single for A-levels, you know how to write grammatically correct and uh, like uh, ordered sentence in Singhala, you can do it. But I'm suggesting you to go for English. English is easier when it comes to French to other language translations. How to choose best essay to write with less vocab? It's up to you, Tirani. Good question. Like. Write with less vocab. Uh, like, uh, just read all the questions that you have given. For an example, here you can find three questions now. So, from that, you have to think uh, about your capacity. So, it's not about the number of words or whatever, or the vocabulary or whatever. Like, you have to choose according to your competence level, right? Uh, it, it's something that I can't uh, choose for you. It's something that you have to choose by yourself because, uh, like, uh, uh, vocabulary is something that is uh, uniquely presented with ourselves, right? Yeah, uh, when you read the questions, 
mulimma dakina eka thamai wannan ganne so likewise mulimma hitaya ane eka likewise if you just read the three uh, read the three questions and if you just find it find some kind of a question is easier then you have to choose it but eka liyara tika vela ge no this is not the ideal one for me uh, the other one should be written kela don't go for the next one because you are having uh, a limited time here okay first read the questions well and just try to brainstorm the thing that you are going to write brainstorming is the key what are the topics we can guess covid politics uh, uh, importance of learning a foreign language uh, health and sanity these things can be uh, i say topics right there are my suggestions some suggestions have a clear suma binar binra do we have to write a topic for the essay if one is not given if they have asked you have to write it hansini otherwise you don't have to write it is there any rule to start the paragraph from the beginning uh actually yes good question uh, okay 79 people are here isurini is asking is there any rule to start the paragraph from the beginning uh, for this i am just suggesting you If you have learned English properly, you might have heard the word topic sentence. Every paragraph is having a topic sentence, which means uh, like you are going to reflect what you are going to write within the paragraph. This is not about the thesis, okay? This is not about the thesis sentence. Make a topic sentence. Okay? That means it just uh, foreshadows. एक दिन का पेनुंग करना माँ what you are going to write within the paragraph not within the essay what you are going to write within the paragraph so every every paragraph is having a topic sentence that means that sentence is uh, just foreshadow in the examiner that you are going to write about this content okay that sentence is called topic sentence you know what to, what a topic is right so topic sentence means like it's a sentence which is uh, foreshadowing the content within that particular paragraph every sentence is having every paragraph is having a topic sentence okay um is there any target essay topics yes i discussed that can you suggest some resources that we can find some antonyms and synonyms uh you have you you can google it from the internet shashi like you have like and uh, dm me i'll just show do we have to write topic for the essay okay it was answered how can we avoid the confusion when seeing the oh no we did it means in from the current scenario oh uh, it depends akila akila is asking uh, is a topic that taken from the current scenario current situation so uh, are they like uh, predefined or whatever so yes of course like uh, it's rapikin khali in akila so it can be something like that or else it can be something existing for an example uh, imagine of the advanced level general english essay topics normally uh, they still are talking about the learning of uh, the importance of learning english and all. likewise we we can have such topics uh, learning uh, the the importance of learning a foreign language and all right so there will be some essay topics and also you have to focus on these uh, everyday situations as well because uh, they are common scenarios that you are facing every day so you are having experience and now uh, you will be requested to write explanations about the experiences and also yes both the situations can be there e learning yes e learning can also be e learning and distance learning distance education social media so they will also be some suggestions suggestions for uss do we have to do the translation sentence by sentence yes i have uh, uh, like uh, answered that question a composed a compound uh, translation has to be there but you will be marked by the examiners for each sentence that is about the examiner so what you have to focus here is like you have to be careful when you are just uh, translating that particular sentence into english so yeah in the literature part also should be Write in our own words if they are not asking to cite. 
yes if they are not asking to cite this is something very good like uh, in the 2020 paper or i can't remember 2019 or 2020 paper from last two papers like uh, uh, it was given within the question let's go to that i oh, know uh, sorry so not from this from your practice paper uh, it was given that not to cite from the uh, text, right? So if they haven't given such words, cite vage, cite kiela hari, court vage, obviously you have to write it from your words. Uh, and if you're citing something from the text, you can use inverted. You know how to put inverted in French, right? So you have to use inverted if you're just uh, quoting something from the text. How to choose best essay to write with oh no. 2007, the same lead text has come, which was given in the previous year. Yes, that's why I just asked you not to like that's why I just told you like it is 50%. It can be appeared, it can, cannot be appeared. Like since you are having in 2017, it was the uh, previous syllabus. No? So uh, by that time, like so many options were uh over but now you are having so many options that means you are having 10 options so in that case like you can uh, go for those 10 but remember it can be appeared since if you ignore the thing like uh, it's something where you are just uh, going to have less marks right so there are some tricky things so make sure that you uh, learn all the 12 things in the letter only the body part should include yes of course in the letter, your address, your date, your signature, your endings, they aren't counted as 150 marks. So only the content, only the content will be counted as 150 words. So remember that. So you have to write 150 words within the content only. Is it good to write a creative essay or the argumentative one? Uh, for this question, Karusha, I'm just going to use a previous experience of mine for my, uh, like my friend who was doing A-levels with me. She's someone creative, but I'm someone argumentative, right? So uh, since the topic was uh, okay with the argumentative essay, then the creative essay, narrative essay, she has chosen to write the argumentative essay, but she ended up getting a less result, right? It is up to you if you're having a creative way of writing, then you can choose the creative essay. While uh, if you are an argumentative person, like if you just go for arguments most of the time, you can just, uh, and also if you can argue well within the written context, then you can go for an argumentative essay. It's something again you have to uh, think of and also you have to select by yourself. What is the difference between the thesis and the topic sentence? Thesis is only appearing once in the first paragraph, last line uh, of the essay. First paragraph, okay, last line, like we did a thesis statement, okay, no. whereas topic sentence would be the first sentence in each of the paragraphs you are going to write. Okay, so imagine that you're having five paragraphs in your essay. So you have five topic sentences, but you are having only one uh, thesis sentence, and that is uh, the last line of the first paragraph. It is reflecting the whole essay, but topic sentence is only reflecting the uh, particular paragraph you are uh, dealing with. Will they give good marks for the expressions that we use in the essay? Of course, that shows your colors, that shows your language capacity. So of course, if you are using good expressions in your essays, and everything like you will be given marks. Like actually it's not about giving marks, like they will appreciate your writing and like a so like uh, they won't tend to marks very randomly, very often. marks If your writing is creative, do they expect an advanced vocab from us? No, it's not an advanced vocabulary, but a rich one that means a uh, kind of a contextual one, right? So it's not about a too advanced one like, like the poets and uh, these writers using in literature. It's something that should be convenient, that should be grammatically correct and all. So if you can maintain such kind of a vocabulary and sentence patterns, that is what they are expecting. You are not expected to write heavy sentences and all. Actually, don't go for that. 
if you are just writing sentences make sure that you write very simple sentences especially when it comes to this this is for french and english both make sure that you write simple sentences because when you just go for too long sentences where you are using too much of uh, conjunctions um, relative clauses and all like it uh, distracts the examiner and they will deduct your marks okay because you are having so many grammar mistakes uh, although you are a good writer you might have so many mistakes if you just go for lengthy sentences make sure that you remember that as well okay if we get a question for uh, form essay like question i should be question a no a uh, question form essay means like you will be given a question basically what you have to do here is like it is not something that you have to regard with the marking schemes for an example in this question like this is the marking scheme okay so here uh, like uh, what you are uh, what you want to write is like you have to justify you have to question the answer the question first for an example mithana hane if it is a uh, is it good to Uh, sorry uh, is it possible to have uh, true friendships over the internet so for this question you first have to say yes or no and then you have to provide um, arguments so actually there won't be some kind of question based things and like if it is if the if the topic is like a b c d like if the topic is uh, divided into some sectors then you are not like answering those sectors you are just uh, creating a overall idea and putting that into an essay that's all you are not answering abcd parts in the essay because this is an essay so it's a whole com comp composition right good question should we write the word count at the no you don't have to write the uh, word count this is not a uh, these are uh, summarizing summarizing they will just go for it is there any rule in french to start a paragraph from the beginning of the line or the middle of the line uh, the question is not clear for me surini if we get a question for oh no how to understand the comprehension questions how to understand the comprehension questions like uh, it's again up to you that's why i told you like this is the difficult most difficult part where you have to tackle in your paper it is given with the highest number of marks and also at the same time so uh, it's something very hard because uh, the, this is like uh, understanding this context uh, where you have we are you are seeing it for the first time is like uh, understanding a person where you have met that person for the first time right so it's something very difficult where you have to read it at least twice and like tackle the idea that has been given in theory then only you can just go for the comprehension questions and just uh try to find the key fact that is uh, requested to write as the answer within that question before moving on to the answering okay uh, should we number the paragraphs while writing the essay no you don't have to mm, number the paragraphs like you are given a numbered paper 1 2 3 4 5 kela paper ek number kar lena so you can so you don't have to go for that para ek patangan yes Angelia, yes. I don't know whether I pronounce the name correctly. Yes, obviously I'm giving you the. I'm uploading this and I'll be giving you the recording. Para ek patan ganne apni English wali liya the rule. Main din French wale rule rule ka tiye na the para ek patan ganne on a rule main din kiel. Actually, you are going to like that is the way that you are separating paragraphs. So make sure that you keep a space of one. Point five, right? Yes, one and a half inches. Anga like our good space. Like that, you just start writing the paragraphs. That is the way that you are normally starting a sentence in every language because paragraphs are there just to choose the ideas appropriately, uh, like in in an order, right? One and a half inch. Yeah, is that all? What happened? Okay then, if it is, uh, yeah. Uh, if that is all, like uh, I just uh, wind up the session, so I'm going to give you the recording of this session. So, may I say, both of you are welcome to join us. Sorry, we are not.
Have a pleasant. You're welcome.